Oh yes, heartwarming youth is here once again. The pony equivalent of our holiday Christmas. Many bronies I know started singing the songs many weeks ago, including me. We got many heartwarming episodes over the years. Heartwarming Eve in season 2, Heartbreaker in season 5, A heart Heartwarming Tale in season 6, and The Heartwarming Club in season 8. And even a special with the best gifts ever. And all of those episodes have their own special meaning and convey another beautiful element of Heartswarming. The first is, as I said, Heartswarming Eve in Season 2. It's this episode where we get to hear about the holiday for the first time. The main six travel to Canterlot to put on a play about the origin of Heartswarming. Once upon a time, the three pony tribes, Earth Ponies, Pegasi and Unicorns, were in France as in the modern ages, but simply something that I would describe as business partners. A suddenly appearing blizzard didn't help with the relationship between the tribes. All the tribes met to discuss what to do about this, but went apart fighting. All of the tribes decided for themselves to search for a new land, and all ended up in the land that would become Equestria. They continued to fight over this newfound land, and as they fought, the blizzard got closer. Turns out, they were actually Vindigos, mythical creatures who bring the cold and feed off the dispute between ponies. In the end, not the tribe leaders, but their assistants came together and activated the fire of friendship, which warmed, the, warmed their hearts and kept the Wendigos away, while uniting the tribes. After this event, even the leaders came together and founded a land for every pony. Equestria. That's a lovely backstory for a holiday and fits really well in the Friendship is Magic theme. It conveys all the values which Heartswarming as well as Christmas represent, mainly the being together spirit and the celebration of something important. The important thing being a world changing event that makes it just more important, not only for the feeling of a holiday but as a necessary thing to do. The other big aspect of Christmas are the family and the celebration with presents and traditions. One of them is shown in the next holiday episode, Halfbreakers. In this episode we can see the clash of traditions between families. In the human realm we can see the differences in the day you open the presents, just like in MLP where Twilight and Spike open them on Heartswarming Eve, while Pinky and Applejack as well as their families open them on the day after. But even between those two families, there are many differences in traditions, which we get to explore in this episode. The Apple family visits the Pie family on their rock farm. At first, the traditions they participate in seem weird to the Apples. Applejack even tries to force the Apple family traditions on them, because she thinks it would benefit them in having a more and better heartwarming Eve. That doesn't go well and causes a disaster, but the other apples show her why the traditions of the pies are great too, as well as the traditions of the, of the apple family. In the end, they come together and celebrate as a big happy family, with many differences and similarities. No matter what your traditions are, you're still someone who deserves the joy of spending quality time with family and friends on the holidays. The next episode is a heartwarming tale, the pony version of A Christmas Carol with some of the main characters playing the part of, for example, Ebenezer Scrooge, represented by Starlight but called Snowfall Frost, Bob Cratchit by Rainbow Dash called Snow Dash, Bob's son Tiny Tim, who has no official name in the episode but is seen in a song with his head and scarf by Featherweight and of course the spirits of past, present and yet to come hot swarming Eve by Applejack, Pinkie Pie and Luna respectively. But all of them have no connection to the actual characters outside of the episode. What a long sentence. That's why I don't talk in my videos. <laughs> Snowfall Frost wants to remove Heart Swarming Eve, but the traditional spirits show how why the holiday is so important with even more impact. <laughs>
swarming Eve out of the way, the Windigos can return, and with them, the blizzard and the danger to perish for all of the pony races. This story even gets the normal Starlight Glimmer to try and enjoy the holiday, who was rather hesitant about joining the festivities before. In the end, it has the same lesson as the original Christmas Carol. A holiday isn't useless just because you're not productive for a few days. It has its value for society in Equestria even more than in our world, and without it, it just wouldn't be the same. The next episode is Heartwarming Club, in which we get to see the young six and their perspective on the holiday. This time not only the differences in traditions are in focus, but also the differences in holiday in general. Every creature has a different way to celebrate. For example, the Yaks have a holiday called Snildar Fest, which is a combination of smashing, stuff and family. And I quote the most beautiful things in the world combined. The changelings celebrate just like Twilight told them. Literally, they build a fire, put up a tree on a rope, and sing Carol. It's not like the ponies do, but they make their own holiday traditions. The Hippogriffins celebrate in a completely different way. They celebrate three days in a row, the first in Sequestria to celebrate the protection from the Storm King. On the second day, go on Mount Eris, to celebrate the defeat of the Storm King, and on the third day, they celebrate on land and sea, all together, in harmony. The dragons also have a totally different tradition. They come together and tell each other grueling stories, and the one with the best story gets a pile of gemstones. Even the grumpy griffins celebrate with their families, but Gallus doesn't have a family of his own, which is why he tries to keep the other young six in school a bit longer, just to spend time with the people most dear to him. In the end, it works, just in a different way than he expected. The point being that all of them have their own ways of celebrating, even if it's not the same holiday at all, but with a similar meaning for friendship and families, which always come first. The last holiday special was the special The Best Gift Ever, which explores another important part of Hearts Warming and Christmas, the presents. The main six are stressed out about getting presents for every pony, until Applejack proposes the idea of Hearts Warming Helpers, where every pony just has to get a present for one of their friends, which should get the pressure down. But it does exactly the opposite. All of them think way too much about their presents and end up with no presents or something that will cause a disaster later on. At the end of the party, it all comes together and the disasters unfold. But after they resolve them, they realize that none of their planned gifts were really necessary. And the best gift that any pilot pony could give is friendship. Which is also the lesson of the special, the presents for the holidays are only secondary and the thing you should focus on is the time you spend with your friends and family. Hearth Swarming Eve and Christmas are obviously very similar. The main traditions like giving presents, singing carols and of course spending time with your loved ones. But still it's very different from our usual celebration, as is every type of celebration, even in our world. So the final lesson is to accept every pony, regardless of their way to celebrate, if they even celebrate at all, or their gift-giving traditions. We don't only celebrate our similarities, but our differences as well. It's beautiful and such a holiday, as well as these episodes, represent the main premise of the show, that friendship is magic, as well as is Hearts Warming Eve. But now, I want to know what you think. Do you like the heartwarming episodes? Which is your favorite Christmas or heartwarming tradition? And how do you celebrate? Let me know and until next time, fellow bronies, brony fellas, and bye!